Hello everyone, welcome back to another art session with me. I'm Marcy and this is Prince and Paints. It's good to see you all again and if you're new to my channel, welcome and enjoy. I hope you learn a great deal. So today guys, I'm going to be adding to my collection of my how-tos. I know I, I tend to go a lot this way and that way, but I want to touch base and cover as much as I can uh, when learning um, about art supplies and the craft and everything that has to do with it. So I hope you all have had um, uh, are enjoying the last two mandalas that we created in the past two weeks and that um, now we can learn something that's quite small and relevant, but um, it's very helpful. This is something that I always refer to when I start my dotting projects. And however, I've, I've just never realized that not everyone knows these tricks and knows about them. So I wanted to create this short video to help you better understand choosing colors for your palettes and really knowing what's available for you. Most of you hopefully have been using the Deco Art Americana paints. They are usually very readily available in the United States. However, I do know in Canada and other countries, you do have a hard time trying to find them. This is more or less touching base with American brand paints, but it, I can check into other sources if you shoot me a comment in the link on the brands that your country has. Maybe I can help you find what this is that I'm going to show you. Okay. I personally just love choosing uh, Deco Art Americana. I've struggled in the past with trying to find the perfect pigmented paints for dotting and I found that Deco Art is really the go-to for me. So I'm going to touch base on that today um, as an example. Like I said, all different kinds of name brand paints really do, should have this on their websites. Okay. On the website, I'm going to show you here and a little bit of a screen that's side to side. You can simply go to the Deco Art website. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom where it says color charts, you can click on that. And here it will show you the different brands that they make, right? We want to stay within the Americana brand and that's when we're going to open up the PDF to this file. And if you see, they make every color for the Americana Deco Art brand. Going back to here now, I want to show you what I did. I printed these out and I laminated them. And so when I go to the craft store, I can bring this whole set with me. As you can see, it's every color they have to offer. And then they also, at the very end, also show the dazzling metallics, okay? So we have all of these available. So when I go to the craft store, I actually take this with me. <laughs> as silly as I look, I don't care. I bring this in my bag, my tote, and this way, usually when I go, I can highlight what colors I'm low on. And so I have like an inventory of the colors that I want. Now, some stores only carry certain colors. I know in Pennsylvania here, I can, can't can find some of these colors. So I'm limited on what it is that I can purchase. But I do have a nice amount of a, a collection that works for me. All right. And uh, it's nice to go to the store because at least in my state these are only about a dollar a piece if you go to michael's or hobby lobby there might be some other craft stores that sell them but those are really the main two go-to's for us in these states it's better than going on the actual website because the website is about three dollars a bottle so you're saving yourself a great deal so if you need to go do a haul i guess i suggest going to the store and purchasing them um, but you know all in all 
this is a great color chart available for you to see what colors it is. They are pretty true to the color as well for the printing aspect of what they look like. They might be slightly off, but sometimes when they dry, they do get a bit darker too. So keep that in mind. But I, I really love this and I suggest to everybody that you print this out and, um, you know, use this as your reference point of what colors you have, because when you're looking at all of your bottles, whether they're in a cart or on your wall on a shelf or whatever, it could get quite overwhelming on how many colors you really do have. So this is nice to just have a quick resort and also go when, you, like I said, take this to the store so you know which ones you have. I usually like to mark how many I have next to it with a dry eraser marker and then I usually circle the ones that I already have so if I do find one that's not circled I know ooh, I can add that to my collection right this is really cool now there's another thing that you can also do and I found this was really helpful this is a really cool one I find this helps me a lot in particular when I don't know what kind of colors I want to choose for my color palettes. Say, for example, I love Portobello, right? So this is my Portobello. I love this color. It's like this rich elephant gray type color, but also similar to a clay kind of color. And I always find myself drawn to using this one. However, sometimes I don't know what tone it is, so it could be on the cool side, it could be on the warm spectrum, and I struggle finding to match colors with it. So, <clears throat> this is what I found online. If we show our little screen again, I'm going to show you that if you go to the same area and you scroll down and you choose the color charts, okay, and when it brings up to that area, in the same portion that you see here, there is a thing called uh, shading and highlights, okay, and it's going to open up to a PDF as well, and when you get this, print it out, so this is what I have, I'm going to go back to here now, so this is what I printed out, so it's our shading and highlighting chart, all right, and this is updated of May of 2023, I usually like to go every year and make sure I have the most updated version, but for example, guys, we have, we're going to have our main color, this is our main hue, and then we're going to have a shading color that complements that. And then we're also going to have a highlighting color that complements both of those. So we're getting a three color bank for, right? So that's pretty amazing. So let me show you some. I actually clipped it right here. Like I said, Portobello I have. And so this is my dominant color. So it'll be located in this first chart. Here's Portobello right here. And so the shading colors that complement this is bittersweet chocolate and the highlight is oyster beige. So if I was to do some research before I go to the store and want to buy stuff or say for example I couldn't find it, I can look on this chart and see, okay so these are all the browns, so there's bittersweet chocolate right there and now it's, it's almost like black. It's very dark. It's almost considered like the traditional burnt umber color. Burnt umber is probably one of the most popular or raw umber is going to be the most popular colors you can find in this in the stores that are the darkest shade of brown. Okay. And so for me, I actually don't even have this color. Of course, go figure. I was a bit bummed when I saw bittersweet chocolate because I don't even have it. However, I can suggest this. And this is something that, as an artist, you're just going to learn over time of knowing and, and understanding color theory, is that if I don't have bittersweet chocolate, I know for a fact my darkest color is burnt umber right here. So all I got to do is add a little bit of black, and then I'm going to get a bittersweet chocolate cover color. It may not be exactly the same as that, but it's going to come pretty darn close, guys, okay? So I'm going to consider my burnt umber with a little bit of black, my bittersweet chocolate, and then I do have my oyster beige. So here we go. I already have three colors here. That's a nice starter to my 
palette. And so, um, you know, I really love this chart. I think this really helps you understand your hue value, your values of your color. So you have, you have your midtone, you have your highlight, and you have your shade. So that's really fantastic to have, especially when we want those gradient colors when we're dotting. Like I said, this is a chart that you can check out. Now, I can even show you in a video real quick. The point of this whole thing is that most of these websites uh, do have some pretty helpful information. You just have to know where to search for it. Pinterest is even fantastic when showing some nice color palettes already ready to go for you. The problem with those though is that they're not geared for the type of paint that you actually have. So you have to sit there and take some time and figure out, okay, I think this looks like that color, but it may not be. So that can be a little tricky, but it is a great source to use as far as using Pinterest. Like I said, you can use other websites. For example, if you are a full car and you love using full car, the brand name is actually from the company Plaid. Plaid also makes Apple Barrel paints, which you can find in Walmart. They also are, I think they're big on Mod Podge and they make other, com the, the company's quite large, so they make other kinds of paints. But even full car has this nice color palette incorporated in two so that it shows you all of the colors that are available so that you can get them. So guys, this is just a quick guide to finding out what your brand paints are available for you and a little helpful trick as to what colors to pair with each other. And I do hope this becomes something that you can incorporate into your everyday painting and thoroughly understand what's available and finding helpful choosing paints and things like that. So that's all I have for you guys on this one. But I do, like I said, I do find that it's really fantastic and very helpful. Take care guys and happy dotting.